Well, so it begins. Something different this time, though. So, as you were probably expecting, with the collapse of oil prices, investments in uh, further development are not going forward. Well, at least not anywhere near as much as they would be. The U.S. active drilling rig count has begun its nosedive. However, the interesting part is, this is just the beginning, and uh, because everything kind of, you know, in the industry works on a two-plus-month delay, usually at a minimum, this is just being caused by the initial oil price drops from uh, the beginning of falling demand from when the uh, the whole virus outbreak started in China. So this is just the beginning. Welcome back and welcome around everybody. This is the Quick Fire Energy and Resource uh, mini podcast series. It's brand new. This is the fifth episode, session 000005. So as is obvious, this is a podcast. So listen Don't watch uh, for the betterment of your eyes because it's just going to be a still image for the entire time. Although I've decided throughout these, the shifting uh, still images or visual backdrops will no longer be stock images. I will actually put up uh, pieces of my own photography work instead for anyone who cares to want to see that. But regardless, listen, let the ads play when they come up because I kind of need those. Having an income is nice, even if it's tiny. If you want to boost my income by any degree, that would be graciously appreciated. You can either send stuff through PayPal or subscribe to the Patreon thing. But regardless, beginning with everything here, U.S. rig count has dropped over the course of this last week by 20 active rigs, falling from 792 down to 772, and down from the roughly 1,000 it was at a year ago, and way down from the nearly 1,100 it was at a year and a half ago. Now, in particular, the drops came for Texas, falling under 400 rigs, down to 397. A far cry down from the over 600 that the state had drilling in it a year ago, or a year and a half ago. New Mexico still staying relatively in the same range. It's still in the hundred and teens for the moment. Oklahoma, where the Anadarko Shale is, dropped a number of rigs down to 43, down from the nearly 120 that it had a year ago. North Dakota has even begun falling. Where the Bakken Shale is, North Dakota for years has been in the 50s in terms of active rigs as uh, the industry has struggled uh, to just keep Bakken going, and they've managed to keep it for a while, between 1.4 and 1.5, usually in uh, milling barrels per day. But now, it's begun falling, and is about to start falling below 50 rigs. So, Bakken is uh, likely going to finally enter its uh, slow terminal decline. Louisiana is now down to only 47 rigs. Louisiana formerly having numbers similar to Oklahoma's previous numbers. Pennsylvania, part of the Appalachia Shale, still managing to hold in the lower 20s. West Virginia, still in the teens. Ohio has been the source of uh, the stall in Appalachia Shale growth. Ohio used to be in the upper teens constantly in terms of actively drilling rigs. However, uh, there's not much more they can do in Ohio. So Ohio has begun dropping and is now down to single digits, only nine actively drilling rigs left. So it has begun, although again, this is just the beginning. So the other subject matter addressed in this video, the global oil consumption numbers. Now again, as you know, data is on a delay in the oil industry. These numbers are for countries' consumption levels as of the end of January. So as of the end of January, or a month and a half ago or so, Nigeria was still normal, 532,000 barrels a day of consumption. Japan had begun dropping 
They dropped from 4.3 million barrels a day down to 3.8 million barrels a day. Canada at that point was still normal, 2.67 million barrels per day. Brazil had actually gone up, up to 2.4 million barrels per day of consumption. Germany was still in a normal range, 2.3 million barrels per day. France was still normal, 1.6. The UK dropped a little bit as a lot of flights uh, from China, South Korea, and Japan started cutting off. They dropped a little bit from 1.6 million barrels a day down to 1.5. South Korea, as at that time they were having their own domestic outbreak and they began to shut a lot of stuff down. Over the course of January, South Korea dropped from 3 million barrels a day, which is a bit above average, down to only 1.4 million barrels a day. Spain was still normal at the time, 1.24 million barrels a day. Italy, Italia was still normal at that time, 1.2 million barrels a day. Australia was still normal, 1.04. Thailand, as a lot of the, uh, you know, incoming traffic from China, Korea, and Japan began cutting off, that had a bigger effect on Thailand than it did on the UK. Thailand dropped from 1.3 million barrels a day down to 1 million. Turkey was still normal, 963,000 barrels a day. Netherlands were still normal, 942. Iraq had uh, just sprung back up from its uh, consumption collapse uh, brought about by a lot of the instability in earlier months. Iraq's domestic oil consumption is back up to 757,000 barrels a day. Egypt's oil consumption, 662,000 barrels a day. Poland, still normal, 642,000. Argentina was still normal at that time, just under 600,000. Switzerland was still normal, 206,000. Norway was still normal, almost hitting their average uh, oil consumption number dead on. Usually, usually they average out to about 200,000 barrels a day, and at the end of January they were just under it at 199. Azerbaijan was uh, climbing in oil consumption again, and they were up to 115,000 barrels a day. China and India did not release their numbers on time, so I don't have their January numbers. Now we've mentioned the potential peak of U.S. natural gas production, and U.S. natural gas production is still in the 106 range, coming in at 106.7 billion cubic feet per day. Heating demand, as the end of winter is here, dropping down to 27.3 billion cubic feet per day. Demand from natural gas-fired power plants up to 30.3 billion cubic feet per day, decently higher than at this time last year, where it was only 24.7, as it is already getting uh, decently hot down in the southern regions of the U.S. So AC demand is going up, which runs on electricity, so that's pushing electricity demand up. And whilst most of you know I'm from Alaska, my parents still live down in the lower 48 states. They particularly live in South Carolina. And in their local area over the, uh, the past week or so, they've been almost breaking a lot of heat records. As it's only been the middle of March, and they've been almost hitting the 90s already. And I definitely expect, uh, with the indicators this coming summer is giving off, and, and the additional amount of electricity uh, generation capacity that has been switched over from coal to natural gas, I definitely expect uh, U.S. natural gas consumption from natural gas-fired power plants to probably get up to or over 49 billion cubic feet per day at one point. And the other numbers, U.S. natural gas exports on LNG tankers staying flat at 8 billion cubic feet per day, and consumption by the pipelines for its own pumping system fuel coming in at 7. U.S. natural gas storage inventories 2.03 trillion cubic feet in storage in comparison to, normally, this time of year they would be down to 1.75 and last year they were all the way down at 1.16. So that's how everything's going thus far and everyone's still freaking out about the virus. Obviously people, people and even leaders who have um, disease advisors and stuff that should be telling them otherwise are literally expecting instantaneous results from from you know enacting measures like like you know people are shutting everything down people are being ordered to stay in their homes and then in and then in a lot of cases literally only like one or two days afterwards the mayor or the governor or the president acts like dead shocked and is freaking out that case numbers aren't dropping 
That's not how epidemiology works. I know modern society is like desperate for instantaneous results for everything. But that's not how epidemiology works. Like they've told you repeatedly, it's apparently just gone in one ear and out the other for most people, but it takes up to 14 days for the infection to come to full in a person. So even if you shut everything down, it's going to take, therefore, afterwards, up to 14 days for it to develop and show in the people in the people who were infected up to that last minute before the lockdown or whatever began. So yes, for another 14 days after you start the lockdown or whatever you decide to do, you are still going to see your case numbers keep rising. Once the 14 days or so is over, then your case numbers should briefly stall and then start dropping dramatically. But no one has the patience for that. Italy's lockdown, I think, started 10 days ago. I'm not positive. So Italy should have another four or five days of big case increase numbers, and then it should stop. And they, and they should either stall and then start going down or just start going down. Same for Spain. I think they started theirs five days ago. So unfortunately, Spain, you have a bit longer. You have probably about 10 days to wait before everything's going to start dropping down. But regardless, I'll pray for everybody and for the end of this. That's it for this episode, so thank you everybody for listening. Like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you haven't already. Support me through PayPal or Patreon if you want. That's greatly appreciated. And please also subscribe to my other channel and watch some of my stuff I have over there too. But no matter what, may God protect you all. And here's my brother's exceptional singing voice again. A million trumpets shining